Sometimes, though, I, I mean, I absolutely uh, think that's spot on. I guess, you know, sometimes I, I just get, I suppose, not taken aback, but depressed when you occasionally, as I do, hear women sort of say, this has all gone too far and, you know, we've got, we've got to watch. We don't sort of, you know, cross the line and make life too uncomfortable for men. Oh. And, <laughs> you know, you think, for goodness sake. And, I mean, I don't know if you've seen the, the survey that was out this morning from the Inf uh, Violence Against Women Coalition about oh. attitudes to rape, which, you know, the, the proportion of people who still, you know, for example, think that if there's no... Uh, you know, violence, mm. physical violence involved, it can't be rape. Mm. Um, you know, these things are, they shouldn't shock, but they still do. And I, mm. I guess I don't want to, to depress everybody, but it is a reminder mm. of just how far we've still got to travel and, and challenge in the very attitudes that underpin some of this mm. um, before we can make the kind of progress that I think we've perhaps convinced ourselves that we've been making in the last few years, but sometimes you have to concede we're, we're not. Mm. <laughs> it's interesting to have a wee look at Nicola Sturgeon and what she gets up to when she's not in the public sphere talking about Brexit. And I was well aware that she's pretty far left and she's gone very, very far left in terms of, well, if, any, if the recent years are anything to go by, with the, some of the policies and some of the things that she's passed. But behind the scenes, it's a whole different ballgame. This, this video here. She's talking to some woman called, and I'm not even going to pronounce her name. Uh, if I can just get Akawugu. <laughs> ah, there's a name there. I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. But um, it's almost as if she's been planked in there without having any prior knowledge as to what the debate was going to be about, as if this is all new to her. She's as if she had 20 odd minutes to revise. And, and brush up on her knowledge before she went into this conversation with this woman. But um, it's quite embarrassing and insulting considering Nicola Sturgeon is the first minister of a country that's uh, overwhelmingly white for the time being, but yet she still manages to, whether she's just pretending to agree or if she genuinely believes that there's such a thing as racial inequality, for example, in Scotland. I mean, what a load of BS absolute load of BS this woman here is your stereotypical intersectional feminist who tries to deconstruct the fabrics of society in some mumbo jumbo way that really for the most part doesn't make a whole lot of sense but for the other part it's just about as some joke the oppression Olympics you know it's, it wasn't bad enough to imply that there's unconscious bias in society, systemically racist and sexist, etc. You have to take it one step further by uh, including intersectionality, which this woman seems to be proud of being an act activist for, which is very bizarre, nonetheless. I didn't know this until I was sort of researching uh, for, for doing this discussion tonight, that there are, this number might be no longer entirely accurate, mm. but there are only 17. It's not 26. Uh, it's 20, well, even so, 26 black uh, women uh, university professors in the whole of the UK. I mean, that is absolutely astounding. Uh, and uh, Nicola Sturgeon is very famous, if you could call it that, for banging on about gender inequalities within Scotland. And she's, she's made it one of her key ambitions to make it so that there's more representation in certain societies and sectors with more female representation and it kind of goes along with the stereotypical far left dogma which this woman parrots but with a element of race included into the mix as well and that is that if for example there's not enough women in certain areas or avenues it has to be because of sexism. It has to be because they're being held back. It can't be for whatever reason that maybe women don't want to go into these certain job roles, job titles, or if it's in the case of school, they don't want to go into these subjects. Um, you know, all the way from sports, some girl, there, there, there's a drive to get more girls into sports. But I mean, it's all very well and good, but I think it's, at some point it has to be acknowledged that maybe girls just don't want to go into sports 
or the ones that do, maybe they don't want to go into football and all the rest of it. They might want to go into badminton, etc. You know, and the same thing could be said for that. It's not exactly, it's sh- it might be a shocking statistic in terms of how many black people reside in the UK in comparison to how many of them happen to be professors in universities, but you can't automatically put that down to racial inequality or barriers or systemic racism or structural oppression or whatever fucking word you want to use. I mean, and what? There's 26 professors and, as I said, maybe they don't want to be professors. Maybe none of them are interested. Maybe maybe that's the case. I'm pretty sure, and if it was anything to do with the aforementioned in regards to inequalities, then why is there 26 at all? Surely there'd be none. Surely we wouldn't have to have the likes of Afu Hirsch and Ash Sarkar shitting all over white people and white society if our country was as bad as they proclaim. (laughs) 26 black uh, women uh, university professors in the whole of the UK. I mean, that is absolutely astounding. And yet it's not, actually, when you take a step back and and Mm. think about it. I spend a lot of my life thinking about uh, gender representation Mm. uh, generally, but then when you think about the the under-representation of of black women, women of colour, but you being in that position does make you uh, a role model. Uh, Mm. Is that that something you're conscious of? Is that a responsibility that you you feel? Um, Well, well, absolutely. I mean, Mm. I guess it's... How do I put this? Yes and no, because what what I don't want to be is some sort of token. Mm. And, so, and I just think that is that is important. So if I'm I'm happy to be a role model in that way, but I kind of feel like I don't want to take up space from the experiences of black women academics who are still grossly underrepresented, grossly under remunerated and, 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 and underappreciated in terms of their scholarship and also their relationships to, um, to the academy. I mean, I lose count of the number of people who will say to me that Scotland can't have a problem with sexism or misogyny or gender inequality because the first minister yeah. is a woman. I mean, yeah. you know, and I'm, it's great that in Scotland, we we are starting to see more women in positions of leadership. Yeah. But that is the you know the tip mm. of the iceberg, and you know it doesn't mean that the the issues, many issues that we have underneath that, are resolved in any way. Mm. Many issues. <laughs> I thought Scotland was so progressive, Sturgeon. But let's not forget here when she talks about gender inequalities. Not only does that entail underrepresentation, must be sexism, but that's also including the mysterious fabricated gender pay gap that Sturgeon believes all about, the so-called domestic abuse in Scotland being the result of misogyny and gender inequality. Last time I checked that domestic violence had nothing to do with gender inequality. Yes, the main perpetrate the overall perpetrators of domestic violence happen to be men and the victims happen to be women, but if the man happens to be homosexual, the chances are that he'll be beating up his homosexual partner. I don't think it's got anything to do with gender inequality. Or what happens when the genders are reversed and it happens to be a woman doing it to a man? Is she doing it to that man because of gender inequality or is she doing it because she's got a violent tendency? It's very easy to label things under this fuck with all these best words that these Marxists, these far left fanatical quote unquote progressives fabricate in their fucking bubbles. But when they try to put it into the real world, unless you're really in tune with the shit that they're spewing out, it, they just look like they're talking absolute BS. And for her to sit here and nod her head like some nodding dog and agree with near enough every point that this woman says while on many occasions referring to white people herself and white working class, acknowledging her privilege and shit like that, talking about racial inequalities and gender inequalities, agreeing with some Marxist. It just goes to show how far fucking less she really is. It's gone well past except that LGBT education in schools is a compulsory and combating period poverty because I'm, in, I'm good pals with the feminists. This has gone well past that. Well fucking past that. The tip of the iceberg has got uh, what rampant misogyny, etc. It's just BS. These people create problems because they've got solutions for the problems that don't exist. 
they have to create tensions and animosities and divides etc because they've got solutions and laws etc that they want to pass that they need to pretend that there's reason for these laws to be passed in the first place fucking this isn't the 1400s there isn't rampant misogyny and gender inequality etc and there's sure fucking racial inequality <laughs> The, the things uh, that I know you've spoken about and written about, I was reading something that you wrote quite recently, is about, uh, I think, what you described as the, the problems and possibilities of solidarity, mm. uh, and particularly in the, the sort of gender context. I mean, we talk about the women's movement, and, you know, for my entire adult life, I've been proud to consider myself part of the women's movement. But when you describe it like that, it, it sort of assumes... Uh, a shared experience mm. of all women and uh, a unity of, of purpose of all women and of mm. course you know that is not true uh, the experience of a, a white middle class woman is very very different to a woman oh, of colour um, and her priorities of you know dealing with gender inequality will be very different mm. uh, but I, I suppose I still like to, to think and to tell myself that it is nevertheless possible to you know find the common thread and to to forge that unity of purpose do you do you think it is Nicola Sturgeon acknowledging her privilege. Nicola Sturgeon, all oh my days. Of like, oh, this, the, the, the opening of feminist consciousness, the raising of feminist consciousness when kind of women were able to go out to work. And I was like, who are they talking about? My mother, grandmother have always worked and have always been in mm. public space. And in many times um, were working for white women who, you know, and, yeah. you know, and so that it's th those ideas of, there are very few, if we take race and class seriously, then in fact, there are actually very few common experiences. But that doesn't, that, we shouldn't mourn that. We should kind of accept how that mm -hmm. is and say, what are the opportunities of working together? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but, and resisting this idea that we can speak about some sort of homogenous woman, because that homogenous woman will always default to the white woman. That, uh, I sound, this woman is sitting here and spewing out venomous Marxist criteria and buzzwords, etc and goes on to say that we should dismiss homogenous women and Nicola Sturgeon just nods away it's, the homogenous women will always default to the white women so therefore we should resist the idea just makes you wonder how far left is Sturgeon is it what I said in this uh, case of an odding dog act and she was kind of put there to talk to this woman without really knowing what the fuck she's on about or is she really in tune with what this woman is saying or at the very least on this near enough on the same wavelength either way it's still disconcerting that the woman that is in charge of our country thinks it's a joke and worrying that women out there are or some women are saying that all these campaigns and, and, and are all the like that seem to be all about feminism, hashtag me too and all the rest of it are starting to go a bit too far. She thinks that it's funny that these sort of things could potentially have an effect on men's lives and she finds it worrying that some women think that they've gone too far and she's quite prepared to sit there and acknowledge that she's privileged and shit all over society in Scotland for being, uh, for still being very mean in terms of how we treat people that aren't like our own and how very misogynistic and racist we are while this bitch sits and spews out shit about how all of the West is the fucking pinnacle of evil. <laughs>